Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. St. Elizabeth woman charged with embezzling nearly one million. A 26-year-old woman from St. Elizabeth has been charged with embezzlement of nearly one million Jamaican dollars. In a release on Monday, detectives assigned to the St. Elizabeth Police Division said in June 2022, Felisa Dunkley was employed by a lottery and gaming company and was tasked with depositing the day seal into a bank account. Her employer later discovered, however, that over $800,000 was missing. A report was subsequently made to the police and Dunkley was arrested and charged. She is scheduled to appear before the St. Elizabeth Parish Court on Monday, July 25, 2022. Man killed after trapping another in St. Elizabeth Market. Police are probing the stubborn death of a man after he allegedly chopped another during an altercation in the Santa Cruz Market on Monday afternoon. Preliminary reports suggest that one of the men attacked the other and chopped him on his hand. The injured man then allegedly used a knife to stab his attacker to death. Up to 5 p.m., police were still at the scene probing the incident. Man fatally shot in Kingston Eastern, identified as prison SKP. The Kingston Eastern Police have identified the man who was fatally shot during a confrontation with a police team in Harborview, Kingston 17, on Friday, June 24. He is 45-year-old David Taylor of Dallas Castle, Papine and Bull Bay, St. Andrew. According to correspondence from the communications arm of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, Taylor was one of three men who escaped police custody at the Port Royal Lockup in Kingston on Monday, August 30, 2021. The men were discovered missing during a check at the lockup about 4.45 a.m. Lawmen said that preliminary investigations indicated they escaped by cutting a hole in the ceiling door. Before he escaped, Taylor was in custody after being charged with having sex with a person under the age of 16. The police revealed that an illegal firearm a Taurus 9mm pistol with 11 9mm cartridges was taken from the deceased at the scene. Taylor's death continues to be investigated by the Independent Commission of Investigations Indicom and the Inspectorate and Professional Standards Oversight Bureau. Suspect held manhunt launch for another following death of foreign national. A suspect has been taken into police custody and a manhunt has been launched for another following Sunday's death of 50-year-old foreign national, Kenyatta Harris. Harris, who is a resident of New Jersey in the United States and West Green Crescent in St. James, was found dead in the vicinity of Black Factory in Shudley, Manchester. His body was discovered about 5.15 a.m. by a passerby. Head of the Mandeville Police Superintendent Lord Darby said about 5.30 a.m., police were alerted to the community where the man's body was found with a wound to the head on a roadway. Police are theorizing that Harris was hit in the head with a blunt instrument. Cops seek seven men after multiple shootings in West Kingston. The Kingston West Police have named seven men as persons of interest in connection with the shooting of nine people, two fatally, in two separate incidents over the weekend. Robert Berry Ward, 37, a market clerk from Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation was shot dead and six other persons injured along Greenwich Park Road on Friday evening. Less than 24 hours later, Albert Hibbert, 47, a mechanic from Margans Lane, Kingston 8, was shot dead and another mechanic injured by gunmen on Lincoln Avenue, Kingston 13. Police said initial investigations indicate that the incidents might be related. The police believe these persons of interest can assist with the ongoing investigations. They are Renardo Phillips, otherwise called Fry Eye of Matthews Lane, Kevin Rodock, also called Haji of Rome Kingston 13, Alvin Cavalier, also called Bonnie, Dollars Boss, Ansman, Sarge from Spranglers, Shamal White, otherwise called Gov. They are being asked to report to the Denhamton Police Station immediately. The police reported that Robert and six other persons were along with other people at Greenwich Park Road when a white Toyota drove up and stopped. Two men, armed with guns, alighted from the left side of the car, shouted police and opened gunfire. Everyone ran in different directions. The men allegedly left the area in the motor car. 
Afterwards, it was discovered that seven people received gunshot wounds. They were taken to hospital, where Roberts succumbed to his injuries while being treated. The others were admitted. Hours later, about 1.10 p.m., citizens reportedly heard explosions sounding like gunshots on Lincoln Avenue and summoned the police. Upon their arrival, lawmen found Hibbert suffering from gunshot wounds. He was rushed to hospital where he died. Another man was later found with gunshot wounds by residents. He was admitted to hospital. Mark Golden addresses Boardem remark made at political meeting. People's National Party PNP President Mark Golden has moved to address his castigation of the government at political meetings over the weekend. Golden was critical of the government on the state of public emergency in St. Catherine as well as the Commonwealth Secretary General race. Speaking at a party meeting on Sunday, the PNP leader attacked the government over the tabling of the wrong regulations for the security measure in the House of Representatives last week Tuesday. It forced the government to convene a meeting of the House on Thursday so Deputy Prime Minister and National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang could introduce the correct ones. The JLP boy them no stop shot themselves in a them own foot, he said. Some have criticized the tone of Golden's remark. Yesterday, his comments have been taken out of context. My statement was not said in an aggressive way. It was in a reflective tone, he insisted. I just want to assure you that I was not referring to the JLP boy them, he stressed. Meanwhile, addressing party supporters at the Papi Divisional Conference at the University of the West Indies morning on Saturday, Golden took to Honey's administration to task for what he called the Jamaica ill-advised move to go after the Commonwealth Secretary General's seat. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Kamina Chantasimit failed in her bid to unseat incumbent Commonwealth Secretary General Baroness Patricia Scotland. If you make a move like that, you have to have the thing lock. In a make no sense, you push out and you might lose. What kind of pulling is that? Me no know what you did upon, but you start. But to tell you the truth, it is an embarrassment, Golden said. He added that the government spent a lot of money to push John to Smith's candidacy and the opposition wants to know how the funds were spent. Raya Grande's son, minding issue for cabinet Monday, says Samudo. Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Matthew Samudo, says he will on Monday the issue of sun mining in the very grand issue cabinet. At the end of the day, Jamaica has provided us with a lush, beautiful, well-resourced natural environment and we expect that people use it for economic gain. We all have to ensure that all elements of the economy interact with the environment in a particular way. We are looking for the solutions that will allow persons to coexist with commercial activities to happen within the boundaries of this natural source behind our Rio Grande. I will bring the matter to cabinet on Monday to be looked at, Samuda said. Rafters who make a living from foreign locals and tourists along the river have complained bitterly that it has been negatively affected by sand mining activities. During a recent tour of the area to assess the situation, Samuda was accompanied by representatives from the Ministry of Transport and Mining, the National Environment and Planning Agency, Forestry Department, National Water Commission and Water Resources Authority. Commissioner of Mines Roy Nicholson said the visit was aimed at finding a workable solution for all parties. We have heard the complaints of citizens and have seen the conditions and have to address the concerns. We want the rafter citizens and miners to work together as we are one people, one real grande, and it is for all of us. We are here to find solutions and we will from the benefit of all, he said. Raft Captain Justin Norman, who outlined a number of issues that he believes are negatively affecting the river, urged Samuda to act. I am in the trade for about 49 years now. What I see going on in the river is not right. You have something a grow in the river right now, and I don't know what type of grass that is, but to me, this grass comes from the oil. We need to stop this thing. There is a tractor in the river almost a year now and is leaking oil that has affected the rafting and soil that is normally at St. Margaret's Bay. I want you to do something about it, he said. 
His colleague, Paul Burke, who pointed out that mining and rafting activities have coexisted for years, said the problem is the approach now being used to mine the sand. There is not a balance as they just dig randomly without giving consideration about the passage we are to traverse with our rafts. The tourists normally swim and the hole they live in about 30 to 40 feet. We have to be careful as this is dangerous. We have to know where to allow our guests to swim and have to be watching over them, Burr complained. The operators mine at all times and when we are coming down, the water is dirty and the oil in the water and that is not good. They need to operate in the hours designated for mining. We need to create the balance. However, Burlington Development Company Limited, David Philipson, pointed out that the company has had to face its own challenges. I have lost 30 acres of land that the river has taken away, he said, as he pointed to an area of the river where Maras grows. His partner, Rowan, added, We are not allowed to go across the river to mine. Nepa senior manager Richard Nelson noted that both activities should be able to coexist as long as they follow the guidelines it has laid out. The river here is a multi-use resource, mining taking place and rafting taking place, and there is a feeling that both can occur based on the environmental permit granted by NEPA for operation. For the most part, there is compliance and there are some areas of concern. There is a derelict machine in the river and there is oil in it which, when washed into the river, can pose an environmental problem. These are some of the issues that NEPA will have to address, he said. Member of Parliament for Portland Eastern and Marie Valls, who was on the tour, is hoping the issue can be resolved to the satisfaction of all her constituents. We hope we will get a comprehensive plan so that all parties involved will be satisfied as we get an amicable solution, she said, of Samuda's announcement that the issue will be taken to Cabinet. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.